Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribe to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon and welcome to episode 3 of Building a Modular Layout and this series is sponsored by our friends over at Grange and Hodder who supplied us with all of the boards that you'll see in this series they make an amazing variety of baseboards which takes the stress and anxiety out of making a solid start for your model railway so go check out the website it's over in the video description and see some of the things that they make and as you can see i have made amazing progress since the last episode but what i have done is entirely changed my plan you see time is now rather getting away from me and i figured by the time i built painted assembled and positioned all the kits plus the track work things will be getting a bit tight for the show and as i am busy with lmm going off all over filming and editing stuff i figured it'd be time to simplify so allow me to take you through my greatly simplified design it is going to mean that I'm going to butcher this board though. So this railway that we've laid before is going to get modified to be this nice kind of curve. I'm going to put some hills this side so the railway is running through. But this side I've already marked out where I'm going to cut out this main bit of the board here and drop it down into a valley leading into a lake. Now this idea is probably inspired by a shot I took on one of my recent visits to Poland where I put the drone up over a lake to catch one of the last loco hauled services between Wolstein and Leszno and if you enjoyed that you can see the whole video here. Now the idea behind this is that a lake will be a quick thing to do, expensive, but chuck a load of the liquid stuff into there, fill that up, great, with little foresty bits going down here. Basically, I've more than halved my build time. So this is a really exciting thing for me and it's going to be visually different. Also, I'm vaguely aware having chatted to other people that other people are thinking about putting stations in and we may be having more stations than modules. So that gets rid of that idea. So with that, my first thing to do is to take my undersized cork and move my track bed over slightly. I'll then use a knife to cut away the stuff that I don't want anymore. And then I can get the track down make sure the track works and then get the jigsaw out and cause mass chaos. Now in the comments below let me know if you think what I'm about to do is a terrible terrible idea because I do. Regardless though it was time to get stuck in and try and make some progress. So I cut myself a piece of cork to the correct length and broke out the PVA glue and could then start expanding my track bed. Of course because I'd got the stuff which was both too narrow and too thin I had to apply myself two layers of the cork. Having the half size stuff meant I was actually going to have to cut less of the track bed away because I was only going to be slewing it over by about half a rail width. So actually what I've been sent turned out to be useful after all. And with that all sorted it was time to actually lay some railway. The next stage was to set the radius of the track for my nice gentle curve. So having laid them over each other I got a pen out to mark the rails of where I would cut the two to be my join. And then it was time to get out the spinny tool of death otherwise known as a dremel. And today we're not doing safety squints. Yeah eye protection. There is something so satisfying about using a Dremel and just being able to cut through rail like it's butter. So it turns out I'm not as good at that as I thought it was. What I have here is just two jagged edges that used to be a combined rail. And because I'm incompetent, I hadn't actually sliced all the way through the sleeper, so the thing was still attached. Once I'd cut it off though, I could remeasure and double check that where I was going to cut the next rail was indeed correct. And then break out the spinny tool of death again. I decided I'd also use the Dremel as a grinder just to flat off the ends of the rail and make it a bit more acceptable. Now to try and make this thing run as smooth as possible, every single join on my layout is going to have power fed to it. And because I'm lazy and incompetent, I've bought fish plates that have wires pre-attached. So I've just got to drill two holes, slide these on, and I can power that as well. So it means I have power coming in at either side of my layout and then on the single join, meaning there should be no voltage drop across this whole very complex bit of track. So all I had to do was align my track again, mark out where I was going to drill two holes which were going to be where my droppers disappeared through the baseboard. And having marked out where I was going to have to drill, I got the drill out and promptly drilled a hole. Back to the back. 
which is a good way of remembering the polarity of your wires. If you have the black wire always going towards the back of the board. Now, obviously, there is a fair amount of wire on the two of these, so you can route the cables underneath how you want them. Eventually, I'd managed to feed the wires all the way through the baseboard. And with everything else done, now came the more challenging part, actually getting the two sections of rail to join together because both ends were fixed. So it was a bit of a fiddly thing to try and get together. But after a little bit of fiddling, just like that, I'd done it and completed my railway. Now, whenever we get to this stage during a model railway build, the most important thing is to make sure that this section works. So that means I need to go get a locomotive and test it. Which meant getting some proper electric equipment of crock clips and then giving the rails a good clean. And once I'd done that, I could put my little Barclay on the railway, turn the power up and see if the thing would move. <laughs> Success. Meanwhile, in another county, Charles was making progress. So as you can see, the track is pretty much all cut out and cut to length. Most of it's in, got a couple of bits over there still to do sort out. But for the most part, everything is pretty much sorted. A few bits left to cut and wire, and then everything can be fitted to properly, get it all stuck down, get everything functional, and start doing the Def the, the testing, definitely testing and not playing with the trains. That's, it's definitely work related. Which was exactly what I was doing. Testing, not playing, testing, rigorously testing and more testing and then testing more. Charles wasn't quite at that stage yet because his layout was a much, much, much more complicated and he had many more holes and voltage droppers to wire in to make this whole thing happen and he'd been cutting holes. Also, I got a bit excited over here and forgot to film it, but there's now a hole in my board. This is terrible news, what's happened? So, the intention is... Just a nice little pit. I say little, I could fit three Barclays on this pit, but it fits, it sits, there it goes, onto that siding there. So as part of building this entire station module, I've opted to go the complicated route and use, well, obviously point motors, We've got the holes drilled out for them, it goes over there and that does the stuff. But what I've opted to do is go for slow action cobalt point motors. Now these are, well, I bought the multi-pack, so I'm bankrupt. Slow action DC or DCC usage, um, they're pretty good. You put the wire in there, that comes up through the hole, through the point blade, and that goes side to side to make the point blades throw. Plenty of wiring options in here. Got nice little bits here, so you just push down on them, put your wire in the hole and let go and it clamps. The only downside to slow action is obviously on your points, there's that little spring in the middle there. So when you push the point, it holds. And that means that no matter what you do, it doesn't wiggle. However, that's not much good for slow action. So we need to take out that little spring. And that's a bit of a pain. Now, the easiest way to do this seems to be kind of brute force and ignorance, which I've got a lot of. So just kind of pop it out the top of that bit there, freeze the tie bar off. Now, I'm gonna try and get it out from underneath this. I don't wanna pull that out because it's kind of structural to some parts of the point. So just gonna get hold of it and pull. I said pull. Whilst Charles struggled, I continued my testing and went and got some more stock. Remember, this isn't playing, this is testing to make sure everything works. With that interlude, let's chat back with Charles. So I say, we're just gonna pull this little spring here out and in ditching that, we can now quite freely push them back and forth. The spring's not there to hold them in place and what the point motor will do is it will swing one way, slowly swing the other way and in doing so, because it's a stall type point motor, it'll just hold it all in place. 
And now, having removed that, we can pop that in back in position. The only thing we've got left to do is just to drill for the little wire under there for the frog. That takes the power to power this little bit in here, which is why it's all isolated as well as part of being part of my layout, so that the better power through here so your little locos don't stall out. So we're just gonna have to drill that little hole and then we can drop that back in place. And as Charles actually succeeded with getting his points into position, I continued testing. And having completed a gratuitous amount of testing, I decided I probably should actually get on with building the layout because I'd achieved nothing for several hours. The first stage was to cut away all the excess cork. Now some of this was a bit of a challenge because we'd glued it down in episode 2 so I had to cut it and then try and prise it away from the baseboard. But soon my track bed was looking as I'd planned with a nice natural curve in the middle which I suspect is going to be one of the only curves to feature on the entire modular layout. Elsewhere, in yet another county, Loz was busy building something new. And no, this wasn't a very late start on his own module. You can see one of the modules actually behind him, which was almost finished. But this part was a critical part of the plan. And without this, the layout wouldn't function. Because this was the top of the traverser. And this will be fitted out with five different pieces of railway, which will be able to slide forward and backwards so we can select one of those five roads, which will have a pre-assembled train on it which will just drive off and enter the layout. This part is the base so it has to be significantly more sturdy as this is the main structure on which the top will slide. Now Loz has got his work cut out for him because not only does he have to finish his own modules, yes plural, he also has to build two of these things and get them operational. These are actually more crucial than his own module because as mentioned, if we don't have these finished and working, we won't be able to run a train during the show and that will be hugely embarrassing. The fact we've just left him to get on with it is also concerning because he's never built anything like this before and this is a rather large setup from the Duplo that he's been allowed to play with before. But amazingly, it appears that he has actually assembled it correctly and those sliders are really good. And whilst he'd been busy actually constructing something, I was getting ready to do some fairly major deconstruction and this meant marking up my board to work out exactly what it was that I was going to remove and look at me even using a ruler to get measurements. And now it's time to fire up the jigsaw. Now I'll be honest I haven't actually used a jigsaw since I was in secondary school so this is going to be fun. Now some of you might think that maybe I should have practiced on something first before just getting the jigsaw out and attacking my board and you know what you're probably right but after a few cuts I'd managed to remove the first couple of sections and could start to see what I was trying to do. I also realised that I'd managed to cut through the supports, the bracing sections that I'd added in previously. So that was a, a clever move, Laurie, that you've cut through the bracing that you put in. Good work, yeah, good, good work. Initially, I'd envisioned that I was going to remove one solid section of baseboard to keep some kind of structural rigidity. But due to the way that the baseboard is constructed with its frame, this just wasn't feasible. So to overcome this, I had to mark out and cut six sections of baseboard out, which was a lot more work than I'd initially planned. Okay, so two things could have happened here. Numero uno, I've made massive inroads into sorting the landscape on my board. Numero dos, I have ruined the board forevermore. And the scary thing is, I'm not done cutting yet. No, no, this is not it. But it, it does feel a bit more fragile and it's about to become more fragile. <laughs> yes, that's right, more fragile. Because I wanted this area in the middle to be flat, to be a lake. Which meant I had to cut through the frame itself, further weakening the board. Which was a frankly terrifying thing to do, knowing that any moment the thing might just fold in twain. But I persevered anyway, and soon, well, I chopped out an awful lot of it. So where we are now is I have well and truly destroyed my board. Hopefully it is now uphill from here. Because this is pretty much rock bottom. Or at least it would be when I refitted the boards. And having done a quick test fit to make sure it still worked, I had to build myself a structure and this would help to reinforce the frame itself. And then I could re-glue the board that I'd cut up back into its new position much lower down. And of course it wasn't just me cutting up their baseboards. No, 
Dave, too, was becoming a specialist in demolition. I was stood between both of my baseball pieces. They were on legs. OK, bit of a difference from how I was originally planning on cutting it out. I just thought, stuff it, use the drill, go through all of them, go through around the edges a bit. Just be glad you can't see the other side, it looks horrendous. And with some progress being made across the board, that's where we're going to end episode three. Thank you all very much for watching. And if you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking over there for episode one, where we started the grand idea of this project, or episode two, where I started to make a plan and then completely changed my mind. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this mini-series. Let me know in the comments below if you think that we've got a chance in hell of actually achieving making a modular layout. And with that, we'll see you all next time. Tra.